First, I'd like, before we get started, I want to um, thank Chris. He's going to be our clicker person today. And then PJ Cartwright has volunteered her subscription website as part of our demo, too. So thank you, PJ. So, so Woo subscriptions. There are a couple different plugins out there, but the ones we are talking about is the Woo subscription official plugin at the Woo Commerce website. Okay? That's the author of the plugin. And we're going to talk about why is subscri subscriptions important. If you guys were here in 2016, I spoke about recurring revenue. And subscriptions is a great way to do recurring revenue. Now, how many people currently have subscriptions they use today in their own site? Okay, and how many have them they use for a client site? Okay, great. So we are going through a lot of basics and concepts. Unlike your morning session, we're not going to be able to go into a lot of detail in setting it up because we won't have enough time because it's a lightning talk. But I will be volunteering tomorrow afternoon in the happiness bar, and you can come find me if you need some help with subscriptions. But let's talk about subscriptions for a minute. Let's get a little history about subscriptions. Two page down from the So subscriptions, right? In, two, in April of 2017, 37 million visitors kept recurring visiting to recurring websites called subscriptions. That's amazing. The revenue from that has grown 800% on the World Wide Web. Who are some of our biggest players? We have, has anyone heard of Blue Apron? So some of our biggest food, chef type of subscription meals that come to your home is Blue Apron, Home Chef, um, HelloFresh, some of the three leaders in the industry. There's another one, my props, Nature Box. So my kids get Nature Box shipped in every other week with a bunch of healthy snacks. That recurring revenue for them has helped them grow substantially. Okay, so category breakdown. Just to give you a little history um, of what's currently the biggest leaders in the industry is, as we can see here, we have food, lifestyle, kids, apparel, pets, and beauty. So if, I, if you want to take on subscriptions and you want to pick a, an industry or a new product or a market or a website to build, if any of you are PR marketer certified, you know that they talk about the four steps before you start anything, and that's research, plan, implement, and evaluate. And that is so important with this plugin because there are some very advanced things that you need to know to automate with subscriptions. All right, it's not for the lighthearted. You really have to be committed to this. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some resources when you get my slide. So you can learn a little bit more about how profitable subscri subscriptions and subscription-based websites can be. Okay, so when you get the slides, you can come back and you can reference the Blue Apron case study. And that was a Harvard Business Review, and you can just Google this title. I'll leave it up there for a second if you want to write it down now. Subscription ba uh, businesses are booming. Here's how to value them. So that article and that study talks about Blue um, Apron and how they were a new player in the market. They were looking to, it's, it's like something like a $800 billion food market, right? And they want to go and they want to go online. And they have had a lot of success. And then they've had some major pitfalls. And they've gone going back and focusing on marketing, marketing, marketing. Because if you're going to be committed to subscriptions, just like Chris was just talking about, you really got to think through advertising, keyword analysis, getting people to your site, providing great customer service, being responsive, email marketing. You've got to keep that customer. It's a, a lot of competition. Yes? I noticed that there was obviously no blue magazine sites and subscriptions. No, that I got right from Forbes and Harvard studies as the, the largest players right now in subscriptions. It doesn't mean that there's not magazine subscriptions out there, but they're not as popular 
in the, the whole World Wide Web market. Yeah, I mean, we can have, I can show you a lot of studies on that afterwards at tomorrow at Happiness Bar. We can talk about those different markets. Those are some great studies that show you, can help you really figure out which play you don't want to, you want to make. Um, the paper that I suggest you go reach is the Journal of Marketing Research paper, and that was, um, you know, you'll have a link there as well. And here it talks about statistical methodologies that we can use to predict drop-off rates. And so a lot of those predictor uh, drop-off rates all are correlate back to your responsiveness to your customers. If you're going to be online, you guys be active online. Okay. So one of the things you guys are going to see when you start learning about this particular plugin called subscriptions, we have product and then just subscriptions. And you go, what's the difference? You know, I don't understand the terminology. And so when we talk about subscription products, we're physically talking about a product that you're going to get shipped to you in the mail or you're going to make, right? And we are going to use this quilt as an example today because it's a physical item that we can touch and see. Um, did you know fabric industry is a $3.5 billion industry? It's huge. And what is, you'll find is very, very popular is they will have block of the month. So for every month, for a year, they will ship this block as a kit, this block as a kit, this block, and at the end, you sew them all together to make a quilt. Okay? Huge market. And that block of the month is a 10 or 12 month subscription, right? And so you, you sign up and you can continue until you're done through that whole program. That's the same type of thing with the Dollar Shave Club. You sign up, but that's one product that you get every month over and over and over again. And I mean, if you don't know about the Dollar Shave Club online, you need to research it because it went public. It's phenomenal. Okay? Phenomenal. Any of your snack boxes. And now I'll show you a slide. I'll show you an example in a minute. So let's go down. So basic. Subscriptions equals services, when we talk about that concept. All right, so let me give you an example. All right, and this is Web Integrity, um, like Integrity. They're in Houston, and they put their service model online. They teach WordPress. I'm not affiliated with them, and I, I'm not recommending you go to them, but what I know they have on their website is their service packages. So because they have their service packages available for people to sign up online, you sign up as a service. Now you've subscribed into their program, and they bill you automatically every month with your credit card. You get to use their services. That's the simplest way to explain what Woo subscription calls subscription services, OK? Or just subscriptions. Are we good? Okay, now, the fun topic is subscription products. A subscription products is advanced. I call it advanced on their help text. It actually says complex, <laughs> okay? So if you're going to take and go down this, this method and pick a model to focus on as a business model or partner with a customer who wants to go online and do subscriptions, then I suggest you test test, 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 test. It takes time to learn it. All right. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. So let's talk about, let's break down the product subscription types. So there are simple subscription products. And um, here's an example, the Dollar Shave Club. So why is it simple? It's because you pick package A or you pick package B. Every month you're in that program and you get the same thing and you don't have to change up what you're ordering. Your client already knows. One of the very important things that you guys learned about products this morning is inventory. That's the end. You can have a stock item or a non-stock item. And the thing with subscription products, and so you want to write this down, is that if you're going to do a stock item and you're going to buy package A, 
the next month, everyone prior to today's sales plus today's sales is taking out of product A's inventory again. That helps you predict how many package A product solutions you're going to need for next month. Does that make sense? It's always the same kit, the same product. It's simple. And if I, you know, have 100 subscriptions and I have five in stock, then I can fulfill 105. Right? Are we good? Okay. The pricing structure for something like that is the same price every month for the subscription. You don't have to get too complex there. The most important thing for you to learn about subscription and products is that you could have different price models or price terms, like you want to take all the money up front, right, for a year-long hosting subscription soft services, or in product for this quilt, um, you go into a quilt shop, and they're going to want you to sign up ahead of time for this program because they don't want to get to ten, month 10 of 12 and you have stopped paying them. And now they've got two months of a 12-month quilt. Who are they going to sell that to, right? So a lot of quilt shops will make you pay up front so that they know how much to cut and how much to carry each month. Does that make sense? Okay. So... Remember when we talk about subscription products that you need to set up and test your price models versus your product models, inventory, if you keep inventory, and you test through your scenarios. The simplest thing is to have the same product, sell it every month at the same price, and not prepay. Okay? Other than that, we consider that intermediate or advanced. So here's another example of a club. You could sign up, Hey Facet, if it, I don't know, does anyone know who that is? Hey Facet is like this phenomenal artist, and he does all of these fabrics and clothes and, you know, major home improvement lines and just unbelievable decorating stuff, and he's in the fabric business, so he has quilts. He is one of the largest designers in the world. He's about 70 years old, and he has books published almost in every country. Well, a lot of quilt shops will have an online subscription club, Cape Club, where you can go out, you sign up with them, and every month you get a mystery box, and in your mystery box are pre-cut fabrics from this awesome designer. That's easy. You sell a kit, just like Dollar Shave Club, it's a mystery box. You don't know what's coming in, but you know it's all part of his. It helps you, with your customer, control inventory a little better. Does that make sense? Okay. So on the back end, when we're looking at the setup screens, we have a couple different options. So what you're looking at right here is I'm showing you on the back end where you set up the option for a simple subscription. So that's the back end, and you probably went over simple products and grouped products this morning in WooCommerce. Okay? So this is pretty simple. Now you can see behind this pull down, you can see that I've set up a three month program. Um, it's paid up front, and there is no free trial periods. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that for a second. We're talking about um, synchronized renewals and free trial periods. What's really cool about the subscription business is you can say, I'm going to give you a trial period of 30 days. Now, that may not make sense in a physical product because you don't want to ship a product up front and then not get paid for it. Okay? But it makes total sense if, let's say, you're offering hosting services, or web design consulting services, and you want to give them 30 months, or 30 days, I'm sorry, free trial before they actually have to pay you for your services, right? They can sign up. Once they've signed up and given the credit card, then you can initiate the trial period, and then it starts kicking in every month after that 
you know, there's a lot of statistics out there. I didn't put any in the slideshow today, but there's a lot of statistics about people that sign up for programs and then they're afraid to cancel because when they reinitiate the program in the future, it'll be cost them more. So they will stay with you. And if you can continue to build that momentum and get people to sign up with you, you need to obviously provide great service, communication, and client retention. So another ex uh, setting that you have here is you can do a setup fee. So in our example here with this quilt program, okay, when we do an online product and there's going to be a 10-month program for it, um, our customers who have subscription-based WooCommerce sites, they get charged credit card fees from PayPal, Stripe, or whomever. Well, those fees, we require them to be a member of the site to get into the program, and then we charge maybe $9 or $10, and that covers those fees. So a setup fee is a one-time fee that they have to become a member of the program to be able to buy any of the products, or it may be a setup fee per product, per subscription product of a 10-month program. Does that make sense? We good? So that's just one example of how you could use a setup fee. Um, they're very common. So you've got trial periods, you have setup fees, and then you have durations of payments versus duration of shipments of the program. Okay. So now we are looking at a screen for the variable. Let's arrow down. The next one. So variable subscriptions. What does var variations or variable subscriptions mean? That means this quilt could come in blue, red, or yellow. A light, a dark, or a pastel program. Right? Now, it could get much more complicated than just a 10-month program of making a, a class or a quilt or something of that nature. I mean, you can imagine the depth and breadth of how you could use this to teach a class. You could have classes that, as you attend a 10-month program for the class, different things are delivered to the customer, right? But let's say that we get online and now we want to buy a box from HelloFresh and we want to pick exactly not prepaid meals or snacks, even better, the Nature Box snacks. We have 10 different snacks that could come in there and you have to mix and match those snacks. Some, one of them, there is a website online, it's called Red Power Bars, the health bars and snacks, and they use Woo subscriptions, Woo Commerce, and they use Mix Match plugins. So that allows them to pick, oh, I want three chocolate bars, four oats and honey, and one cranberry raisin, and put it in my box for this month. That's very advanced. Okay? Yes. Now you said that your kids eat at the box for your kids? So yes. Yes. So what needs you? Is this a kind of a, a way for you to learn? Like, is it just more of an experiment for you? Or, like, what benefit do you find with this box? Well, um, I think online subscriptions today simplifies life. So if you have Pets, it's a very popular for you to not want to go to the store and buy dog food just because, oh my gosh, your husband told you at 11 o'clock at night there's no more dog food, you better like scramble some eggs, right? If you can count on that to come in into the home every so often and fulfill a basic need that you have, um, I mean, Amway should have done subscriptions. They'd still be like phenomenal in everyone's household today if they had shipped the box in, right? Instead of making people go out. But that's why we have the World Wide Web. That's our new storefront. So there's a ton of trends that show that people like, especially millennials and Gen X, they like to buy online. They do not want to buy and physically stop and go to a store. There's uh, you know, older generations that like to go and touch and feel and you know, the products and then buy it. But as I think especially in the United States, our lifestyle is so fast paced that we don't want to stop and do a lot of that shopping. So it makes online shopping a new way for us all to grow. Does that answer your question? Well, I just wondered, like, are there, are there products in there that you can buy at the store? There's absolutely. Okay. There's absolutely products in 
um, like, for example, um, I can't even think of it now, Red Power Bar's competitor is, um, I can't believe I'm having a, 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 a mind melt here, but um, we buy some of these Power Bars online and have them shipped in because we have runners. Our kids are runners. So they want higher quality products and they want specific flavors that they like, and I don't want to run to three stores to get it, right? Okay, so let's talk about variations real quick. In your pull-down options for your products, you're going to have the ability to pick um, a simple subscription or a variable subscription. A variable will allow you to have different variations of colors of your product that you're selling, that a kit or a 10-month program. Um, another example might be if you're doing hosting services and you want three price points, right, for level one, level two, and level three. Level one might just be a website that you provide for our general business. A level two might be an e-commerce site that takes more power, more space, more data, more pictures. And a level three might be someone who has three websites with you and you want to put them all on the same server. That's a variation of a service. A variation of a product would be different colors with different setup fees and different prices. And on the checkout, on the front end of the checkout, it looks very different. If we have time at the end, I'll show you some of that. Okay. So here, and here is an example of two colors to this, this quilt. And then in the next slide, I drilled down and expanded one of the colorways. And you can see all the settings that are similar to the simple subscription are also available in the variable subscription. But for each variation, it becomes unique. Yes? There you put variable, and then it does give you the option to put virtual. When I did, when I did it myself here, I put virtual, and then variable never showed up. I mean virtual, sorry. I did variable, and then virtual wouldn't show up. So you might want to just test it and start with like um, a digital or a product. So you start with those two first, and then within that, you if you've upgraded a new version of WooCommerce, I did whatever they gave me. Yeah, I'll look at it for you at the the happiest part. Okay, so let's go down to the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about we've talked about products and we've talked about inventory related to products. Oh, we've talked about examples of different types of products and concepts that you can do. I do know that um, WooCommerce has some showcase websites, and uh, I'm going to outline a few of those that are also subscription-based in my follow-up slides for you. I just don't think we'll have time to go through them in a lightning talk. But we are going to talk about payment gateways really quick. Um, so... When it comes to subscriptions, you need to be open to a couple different ideas. First off, PayPal is your friend. There are a lot of people that like PayPal. They like to check out with PayPal. They either love it or they hate it. There's like no in between. And people will call up our client and say, do you have PayPal? I want to pay with PayPal. And then we have other people that says, oh, I hate PayPal. So there's some benefits, though, to PayPal. And there's some benefits to having Stripe. And there's benefits to having manual. So I'm going to explain those. The first thing about PayPal is when you go in to PayPal and you have a renewal that happens in PayPal, and let's say it gets out of sync with Woo, you can literally go into PayPal, click on the right-hand side, and have it reconnect over to Woo and update your status of those subscriptions to being active again. And this is a big deal because in subscriptions, there are hard lines. When something cancels, you cannot change that order back or that subscription back to active. So that's probably should have been my first warning slide of if you go down this path with subscriptions, monitor the status on a regular basis and do not let it cancel. In work orders, right, we sell something via an order, you can take it backwards from cancel to on hold, get a payment, and put it back to active. You don't have that option when it comes to subscriptions. So you must monitor your subscriptions. PayPal will help you with that if you have a payment method set up 
with your client, and you can come back and reactivate it through PayPal backwards. The second thing is PayPal takes Bitcoin. So if you guys are getting into blockchain services and you want to offer that moving forward, PayPal is a quick way for you to be able to take and open a new market to that. Anyone who does payments in, in uh, blockchain technology. PayPal has strong reporting and notifications to you. So a lot of times our clients sign up with our hosting services at Shazam Media and we offer credit card, Square, Stripe, and PayPal. So PayPal for us is a beautiful thing. We um, have immediate notification with a lot more detail. And the wonderful thing about PayPal is with subscriptions being hard, is I can pick up the phone and I can get someone to answer the phone on the other side. And I, when it comes to my, why did my payment fail, um, authorize.net is another great interface for taking payments and they answer their phone and they walk you through why it failed. Okay, I don't have that listed here, but everyone should know about Authorize.net. If you don't, it's a little bit more premium for your customers because they have to pay a, a higher price to have an Authorize.net account. They're paying something like $25 a month just to have it, plus a percent. And depending on what bank they use, that connector you know, has to happen, but the money goes straight into their bank, and they have very strict rules. But if they're doing high volumes, it's worth it. So, you know, there's return on investments for everything. Stripe, so what I love about Stripe is they don't have to go through PayPal on the checkout. You just have your credit card. It's seamless to them. None of this information, by the way, is saved inside of Woo Subscriptions or WooCommerce. It's all saved over at your other third party, whether that be Authorize.net, PayPal, or Stripe. They're collecting the credit card information. You're not going to have to worry about that uh, security end of it for a security breach. But with Stripe, it looks seamless. They enter their payment information. They take it. Boom, it's done. The other nice thing about Stripe is that if someone calls you and says, I want to change my terms, there is a manual step involved, and there's a major liability on your part if you do something wrong. But you can actually go in and change the amount and reprocess the next payment at a different amount using Stripe and subscriptions. OK? All right. So. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a link to the last slide about tips and techniques. And one of the things that we recommend to our clients is setting up Square. Square is not a recurring type of method with subscriptions, but it allows us to show our clients that we can take a manual method of payment that, let's say, they want to hold the inventory, commit to the price, and call you and mail you a check. Or maybe they want to work out what debit card they're going to use or what credit card they're going to use, but their credit card isn't available today, but it'll be available tomorrow. Having the option on the screen to have a manual checkout method to call will work, and then you can invoice them through Square. Okay? Now, what we do, um, and there's some tutorials online, and then I can uh, help you in happiness bar if that's something you want to entertain. You can use the check or the COD setting in subscriptions, and you can convert that and change the title because who mails checks today? Not a lot of people mail checks for subscriptions. They might for a one-time buy, but not on a regular basis. I personally um, only at our company take annual subscriptions via check because we're not going to call every month and collect $95 for level one subscription and wait for a check. We want everything to be automatic because our job isn't accountants. Our job is hosting services, right? And website designers. But Square, you can either connect Square Live if, you, if your client has a Square account, or you can just indicate that by converting like the check field. It allows you to use it for something else. And there are some benefits in Woo subscriptions too because there's some uh, PHP code they have that's available to you that allows you to change that up and, and display different things on the screen for that. Okay. Okay. So, subscription checklist. I don't know how I'm doing on time. But here's some, some gotchas that I want to make sure everyone makes a note of. One, you want to, if you use Stripe, let's just say this. If you use anything other than PayPal, 
to take money in Woo subscriptions, then you need to go into the instructions at Woo subscriptions and you need to read up about testing your site. If you created your site in development mode, which we call staging, it's set a setting that you manually have to change back when you move your site from staging to live. So that's like really important. Like you want to write that down and circle that on your paper. What I would do is if you're installing WordPress, WooCommerce, Woo subscriptions, do it in live first, make a copy and bring it down to staging. Then all your settings are right. Because we had, you know, recently figured out when we sold um, in four months, I think, you know, we've had 200 of these 10 month program kits sell. It's only been live for like four months, which is like phenomenal. And in the first renewal month, PayPal happened automatically and Stripe didn't happen at all. Like half the money didn't even come in. And that's because we had started in staging and moved to live. So there's some very specific instructions that if you've already started in staging and you activate accidentally in staging and then move to live and not vice versa, you have to manually change the settings, okay? So that's your first thing to know. And the second thing to know is if you're gonna use PayPal, you must make sure that your PayPal client's email address that's registered as the primary is set up inside the PayPal setting in the gateway, okay? You can't mismatch that address. So, for example, uh, in our PayPal, we have a primary contact and we have two other email addresses. It must be the primary. Okay, third thing to know. This is a really cool feature um, that they just offered. If you go in and you want to charge a shipping on a product, so we have a lot of examples where we might send a product international and we figure out what all the international fees are going to be. We charge those upfront in the first charge and it's inclusive of the whole program. There's a box that says, is this shipping for, you know, fee included in the first month that you check it? Yes. And that's a big deal. Like, um, if you go Google this, you'll see a lot of help text in GitHub about how do you do this manually because it just became available like in the last year or two. And it wasn't available feature before, which really, you know, expands shipping quite a bit. It gives shipping options. Um, you got discounts, you can take shipping every month, or you can pre prepay shipping in a program, which is really great for subscription options. One thing you need to know, if you're gonna go live with subscriptions, you need to spend a lot of time learning how to upgrade and downgrade your programs. You need to understand the price points in that. So I'll give you a simple example. I have a client, they're in level one. Let's say they pay $95 a month. Um, in level two, let's say they pay $200 a month. They, when they upgrade and downgrade between those two levels, if I make that option available to them, it's gonna figure out, it, you have different ways you can set it up. So you could set it up to charge them by the penny what the difference is between the two programs in that exact moment in time. And then you might get a phone call complaining about the calculation. And you better know how to explain the calculation based on the number of days of this month versus the month of February, which only has 28 days. Don't do it. Just give them until the end of the month and charge them in the new program and don't prorate. Because it's complicated and unless you're really committed to understanding upgrading and downgrading in price, you know, and the charges for that, it's hard to explain. And it's not worth if you charge $95 an hour, an hour explaining it to someone over $10. Right? So that'd be my suggestion. But either way, you need to understand how to upgrade or downgrade your products. Now, the biggest use of this that I've seen is when I want to change my payment processing, let's say in this 10 month quilt program or a class, we're teaching a class um, online or here today at a school and we're charged prepaying for that class. Well, let's say they are paying monthly and then they get their tax return and they come to you and they say, oh, I just wanna go ahead and pay the whole thing off, right? You can upgrade them to a prepay product you set up. So you can set up your products to have different price points. 
Does that make sense? Good. All right. So understand upgrade and downgrade features. And then really cool is if you want, you can change your free trial date to some other verbiage. So let's say you want to collect the money for this class or this block of the month program that's starting in 2018 and it's in November of 2017 and you're taking that money up front. Well, it's not a free trial period. You want to defer when the program subscription starts. That's not a free trial period. It's just a deferred period of when you're going to take, they've signed up and they're going to commit to pay on the first of the year. So you need to know how to change that verbiage. And there, it's in GitHub. I also have a blog on my site where you can just copy and paste it into your functions PHP of your child. And it will tell you how to change that verbiage free trial. And in, in the example I have, it says deferred date, start date. So that's easy. But it is a global change. So we're changing it globally. You, if you're an advanced coder, you could probably, you know, figure out how to do that per product. But um, that's just the basic way, I think, to start. And you have that same option with the free sign-up fee, with the setup fee. You can change that verbiage and tweak it a little, too. And there's some great um, GitHub PHP suggestions if you Google and search for that. And I have another blog that uh, I'll make available to you off our site that you can do that. Um, okay, so payment, we talked about payment versus subscription, subscription durations, and I want to circle back to that real quick. Today, in Woo subscriptions, what you have available to you is very simple things. I'm going to take the money every month, or I can preload all the money into the setup fee and, you know, take it once before the program starts. There's not a lot of options for splitting your payment and your inventory durations. So you can't like take a three-month option easily of payment, but the program goes for 10 months. Now, if those are types of things that you might want to offer, you know, come see me at the Happiness Bar and I'll help you with setting some of those things up because, you know, those are growth areas that we need to vote on. So that's my last item here is go to Woo Commerce and search on the right-hand sidebar of the documentation and look for Woo subscriptions and vote on the things that you really want to see grow in this product because they're really good about adding those features. Okay? But making the payment terms separate from the duration of the subscription is probably the biggest. And that completes my lightning talk. Do you guys have any other questions? Yes. Exactly. So let's just simplify it to this quilt, right? So we know we have credit card fees that we're going to have to pay over that 10 month. And we figured out what that was. So let's just say it was $9 or $10 for PayPal fees or Stripe fees. What we did was on the item, you want to go to the front end of, you can just hit escape and tab over. Let's go. I'll show you one of these sites real quick. So... Here is this, here's this shopping cart, um, and if I go to shop, and I go into one of these items, you want to go into one item for me on the front end? Um, what happens is, I know that when you sign up to this program, I want you to be, I say, you're going to be a member. You have to be a member of this <laughs> subscription program, and you're going to have a setup fee or a membership fee. So that's where you could tweak that little wording to say membership fee instead of setup fee or you can explain it in the description to the right of the product. So Chris is draw, drilling down into one of the products that we're selling, and over to the right you can see the verbiage highlighted in red. So we, re we require a setup fee, and that's a one-time fee that happens on the first payment. Now, let's say I don't want to combine my setup fee and my first payment or I want to synchronize all my dates for all my kids to hit on the 10th of the month, right? What I can do is, and it's really cool, is you can use the, the um, 
free trial period to say one day. And so then the next day, the program becomes active and it looks for the synchronization date and that's when it charges the first month. Personally, at our company, we like all of our renewals to come in on the first of the month. So we set up, defer that to the synchronization date and we don't combine the setup fee with our first payment. And it's real clear to us when we look through our price points, if we had the 995, that was a setup fee, someone registered. Does that answer your question? Um, you know, that's how you have the option, that's right. We, it is a one-time setup fee, and that's what we did based on the limitation of that program. Other than that, you're going to have to embed that into your price point, right? And then you can do kind of shipping the same way. So you can have shipping up front, or you can add shipping throughout the duration, and now you have coupons that you can have. So that's really nice because subscription has really grown into a matrix of different options, and then you kind of have to chart it out. That's where we talk about test, test, test. Test your scenarios, document your scenarios, because it, based on how you apply the matrix, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. Yes? That's right. Okay, so um, the question is, you know, if it's a recurring cost on a regular basis, would you set it up as a maintenance in a service in Woo? Yeah, so it's maintenance. So, and I would say it depends how you sell. So we have a client that is a lawn, um, you know, they, she, she provides tree trimming with hurricanes, she has lawn service, she has design work, right? she uses Woo. And what we do is we set up her annual contracts as subscriptions, and those are maintenance contracts, right? Absolutely, because who wants to call and collect that annual fee? I mean, I, listen, when I talked the last time I was here, it was all about make money while you sleep. And this is the best way to make money while you sleep. And if you do your emails the right way, and you send them out on a regular basis once a month, and you say, we now are offering a BOGO service, you know, you get, this package of maintenance plus maybe all your light bulbs change next month or spring cleaning or whatever that might be, um, you can promote for them to sign up and they might read that like Chris and I do at 2 o'clock in the morning and we sign up for stuff because we're going through our emails and cleaning them out. So I am a big fan of setting up long-term maintenance contracts either in a prepay with a long subscription or by the month. So authorized.net is, is like Stripe, okay? Um, the difference is um, there's a lot of fancy articles about what it really means. It's like, you know, gathering money and when it's distributed, but authorized.net connects directly to your bank. And Stripe and then some of these other ones like Square collect it, hold it, and then they automatically deposit for you. Authorized.net is just more expensive. Okay, Stripe is a great solution. Okay, there was a question over here. Yes. You know, um, so the setup fee, if I'm prepaying today, I'm going to take a spin on that to answer your question. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll take all the other questions, Lester. Let me answer this real quick. So the setup fee, um, in this type of example, if I'm paying, prepaying for this whole program, it's not refundable because we're halfway through the program. It's a physical product that needs required completion, right? If it's a service, that's, that's, that has, depends on you. That's how you want to set it up. For refunds, it kind of, you know, um, refunding is a whole complex conversation about your payment gateway that you chose. And we can talk about those options in Happiness Bar tomorrow. Okay? Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Talk to you later.